Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 with another Dreams Logic tutorial. In this episode we'll be looking at the variables and variable modifiers. The easiest way to think of a variable is just a number that you can modify based on its name. If I open up the tweak menu on the variable and set the name, this will be the name you need to use with your modifiers to change the variable. We'll go ahead and set this variable to P1 to represent player 1 for now. It's important to note that these are case sensitive, so capitals matter. There's a few options here like the initial value, minimum and maximum value. The initial value will be the number that the variable starts off as at the start of the scene. Under that we've got whether the variable is for a multiplayer game. What this will do is give each player a separate copy of this variable. So you could have the amount of prizes each player has found in your level. Now this option's pretty important, the persist in dream option. If you have separate game scenes within your dream and you want to transfer data between them, this is what you're going to use. Basically this sets the variable so that you can get the value from all of the scenes rather than the number being stuck in the one game scene. If you're using this option, you'll need an exact copy of the variable in each scene. It's easier to put all of your global variables on a single microchip and save the microchip and then stamp that in each of your scenes. That way you can be sure the variables will be named and set the same. Towards the bottom, we've just got the current value, value increased and value decreased outputs, which will output the signal based on what the value of the variable currently is and whether the value is increasing or decreasing. I'll take you through an example so you can see it all in action just after we go through the variable modifier. Now naming this gadget itself won't change the variable it modifies, so you have to make sure you use the variable name field to specify the variable you want to modify. There's a few ways we can modify this variable with the different settings here. We can set the variable value, which will set it to whatever the value we tell it to with the bottom slider there. The next option is get which gets the variable value without modifying the variable number and outputs that value from the port at the bottom there. That port is disabled unless it's on the get setting. Next will be the add option. So this will add the value of the bottom slider to the current variable value. And finally is the reset option that sets the variable back to its initial value that's set, not back to zero. These two options here will tell the variable when to update. The first option will update the variable as soon as it receives power. It won't update the variable again until it's powered off and then back on. The second option here will update the variable continuously while the modifier has power, which you'll see soon. Down the bottom here, we've got the number that we want the variable modifier to use to modify the variable. So if we change this to update continuously and drag that slider down the bottom, it'll continuously update the variable with this value. If we change it to the update once setting, the variable modifier won't update it until it's powered off and back on again. If we change the variable operation to add, it will add the modifier value to the current value. Because we got the update type set to continuous, it'll continuously add the value to the variable. So that's all the settings, but let's see this in action. For this example, we'll show how we would update and transfer player selected colors so you can make a color select screen for your dream. Because the colors are split into three values, which are red, green, and blue, or RGB values, we'll go ahead and make three variables called player1, R, G, and B. We'll then duplicate our variable modifiers and rename them to match a variable of their own. Because I've duplicated the modifier, it's kept the settings, and I'll need to change them all to set rather than add. A neat little thing you can do is highlight all of the gadgets, pop into the tweak menu and change what you need to change. This will update all of the gadgets you have selected, which makes changing lots of gadgets all at once much easier. We'll jump into the menu and grab a splitter to split the colors into their separate RGB signals and plug the color of the wall into it. 
We'll then jump into the modifier for the red variable and plug the R port from the splitter into the value slider down the bottom. We'll do the same thing for the green modifier and blue modifier. You can see over on the right that the variables are changing based on the amount of signal being sent to each of the modifiers. We can grab out a combiner and set it to the color output, and grab the current value of the variable and plug each of them into their corresponding port on the combiner. We're now transferring the color from the wall to the floor wirelessly using variables. This is the exact thing I use variables for in the Dream Strike Force to let the players choose their color of the chips. I had the player choose a color and save the values of that color into an RGB variable for each player, then copied the global variables into the game scene and used them to update the player one and the player two colors. I'll be going through this in a tutorial soon, but I just want to make sure I cover all of the gadgets that I've used in the color select first, so if you're not sure what's happening, you have a video to refer back to. I also use the variables to keep the column scores for the AI. That's all for this one guys, see you in the next one.